Congress. Let's bring in Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw of Texas, who joins me now. Um, Congressman, always good to have you with us. Thank you very much for joining us today. What goes through your mind when you hear this story about Arizona, where they kind of took it upon themselves to create a border where there isn't one, and the White House, you know, who never talks about the border, was willing to talk to them about this and tell them they have to take it down? Well, it's really frustrating. Um, let, me, let me put this into perspective. So it, it seems that if the Biden administration is upset about the governor of one of our states putting container, uh, shipping containers on federal land, you would also think that the president would be upset about an infringement on federal land in general, say, at our international borders. So they go for, through all this effort to attack a fellow American, Governor Ducey of Arizona, because he's actually building a wall in his state. They go through all this effort to dismantle this and stop this effort, uh, but they go through they, they put no effort into actually preventing illegal immigration and disincentivizing it. And that's what we're talking about here. This, is, um, this happened because as soon as Biden took office, they stopped building the wall. We had, they were literally leaving materials out there to rot because they just didn't want to build a wall. They didn't like the way it looked or whatever. And so Governor Ducey took it upon himself. And it worked, um, especially in a place like Arizona, because they don't have a river like we have in Texas. So you can actually stop illegal immigration right there at the border. One of the reasons the, the focus of this crisis is in Texas is because of the Rio Grande. The international border is right in the middle of the river. So you can put walls up, but they can still cross and they're, and they're on U.S. territory. It's still a really big problem. Until Biden actually does his job and the State Department does their job and deals with Mexico and gets the Mexican government to stop those migrants who are waiting, as you guys just showed, across the river, we're going to continue seeing this crisis. You need to reinstate the remain in Mexico policy. You need to deport people in an expedited manner. If they're not going to use Title 42 anymore, they need to use Title 8 and make sure it has the same mm. consequences. They can do this, but it's a matter of will. Yeah, you know, people win elections to come up with solutions to solve problems, essentially. I think that's, that's the idea, and that's why people are motivated to vote for someone. So here you have a governor who came up with a solution to deal with his own state situation, and then the federal government, which, as I said, barely gives lip service to this entire topic, found the time to tell him that those have to come down, which I, I find very interesting. The vice president is was you know supposed to be in charge of determining what the root causes were here to try to slow this down. And we hear absolutely nothing about what she's learned in that effort and what she thinks is the best approach, the best solution to all of this. But she did say this. She said, and sadly, what we've seen in particular, I am sad to say, from the Republicans in Congress is an unwillingness to engage in any meaningful reform that could actually fix a lot of what we're witnessing. So you're a Republican in Congress. What's your answer? What's your response to that, Congressman? It's infuriating. We heard the same thing from the press secretary when we all went down to the border and did some press conferences down there, and they said, oh, Republicans just grandstand. They never have solutions. It's just a flat-out lie. I personally, just my legislation alone would fix this problem. The Texas delegation, we put forth an entire plan uh, made up of dozens of pieces of legislation that would 100 percent fix the problem at the border. Not deal with immigration law, right? Not, not, not deal with all of these reforms that everybody wants to do. Just fix the border in, in a very comprehensive way. Uh, that Democrats should agree with. So they're the ones who get in the way of this. I'll go to Democrat colleagues who say they care about the board, and I'll be like, great, we need to reform our asylum yeah. loopholes. And they'll say, oh, well, I can't do that. And I'm like, what will you do? And they oh, say, well, we'll put, more, we'll put more money yeah. in CBP. What will you do? Well, just to process people <laughs> faster so they're here longer and, and quicker so you don't have to have them under a bridge. Right. That's it. That's all they'll do. And don't let them trick anybody. Yeah, I mean, people need to hold people to account when they do vote for them uh, to, to get stuff done. One quick question before I let you go. We played the soundbite from President Zelensky in Ukraine, obviously a big moment when he came to the Capitol yesterday. Um, there's, there's some pushback now in some corners about this money and this commitment and looking for more clarity on what the end game actually is here. Where do you stand on that, Congressman? Yeah, I, I like Zelensky's speech last night. I did the two things that I wanted him to do, which was show some gratitude for what we've done for you. And I think he did that. Uh, the second one was say what's at stake. Make the argument for what's at stake here and why it matters to us. And I make that argument all the time. I think it does matter to us. We can pretend like this is an ocean away and doesn't affect us, like we're still living in, in the 1800s, but we're not. It doesn't take six months to get to Europe anymore. It takes nine hours. 
Um, everything affects everything, especially a major land war in Europe, and especially when Putin, uh, 70 year, and, and Russia, a 70 year adversary, um, is now being dismantled because of a small investment from the United States. It's good geostrategically for us. It shows China what we're willing to do and what they shouldn't do in Taiwan. It maintains us in our leadership role, and I, I think I'm, so. I'm obviously still very supportive of Ukraine and our efforts there. Doesn't mean that it's endless. Doesn't mean that it's 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 limitless. But it does mean that we should continue the fight. Okay, Congressman, thank you very much. It's always good to see you. Uh, have a merry Christmas. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you, sir. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.